Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about boating and diving and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. This week's video has a very vague title because not a lot went to plan this week, unfortunately. Uh, but you know, that happens. What we'll start with though is attaching just a small nut from a bolt to a bit of bricky string and getting some new wires fed down the mast to get the anchor light working again. Unfortunately this week was also very windy so apologies in advance for all the wind noise. To get the string up past this first uh, you know, water loop, I just used a bit of reasonably stiff wire to sort of push it into the main mast where it would start to drop on its own. Dropping the nut down, Jeff Rose just off to visit someone and grab something. I presume when the nut hits the bottom of the mast, this will stop going in like this. I doubt the string's got enough weight to fall on its own. Um, actually, in the lazarette, uh, there's a drill. You know that Christmas tree, the step drill yeah. with the thingy? Can you grab that? Is it in the drill? Yeah, it's in the drill. Yeah. Thanks, Jeffo. I'm gonna come and grab a torch, have a little sticky beak. Yes, so I started pulling broken wires through, then all of a sudden I could see this and hooked it with the hook and just pulled all this out through the inspection hole I drilled. A bit of tape here. And this is why I was saying about pulling them all together rather than two at a time, because I assumed that this sort of thing had happened but it was this that was stopping even that from working. So, yay, old wires out. And string in. The thing that's worrying me now is how far up this bit of thin pipe seems to go inside the mast. I think we have to drill a hole lower down as well. I am very keen on the idea of cutting the mast off and putting it back on with a flange. Can't do that here. I do want to get some nav lights working because I'm going out tonight. Uh, but I think it's a good idea. So we'll um, get the wires run now, but I still will do the flange upgrade down the track. So I'm just going to tape them. I'm going to tape them sort of butt end to end like that rather than overlapping, and then hopefully. <laughs> As soon as we get a smidge through, we should be over yeah. hosed, yeah. Just start pulling back. <laughs> get your fingers crossed. All right, got a flat battery up on the roof, but the wires are finally through and I'm gonna re-terminate this uh, anchor light to the switch on the dash. Hmm. Yeah, I think I can just rewire it from up here. It's pretty manky. Uh, it's only temporary, I'm gonna get an LED. A week or so ago, I did a reasonably large systematic search with the side scan sonar for this lost anchor again. My thinking was if the anchor itself's in the mud, it might show up better. And then, you know, we can always trace the anchor back to where it's caught up in the reef. Few people have asked why, you know, so much effort looking for this anchor, and there's a couple of reasons. One is that, yes, the anchor has some value. It's a reasonably large stainless steel anchor, so, you know, it's not just a $30 Bunnings tinny anchor. But the other is, it's just an opportunity to develop some skills in finding, retrieving these kinds of things, uh, getting the boat set up to do these types of jobs. It's nice and close by, there's no travel time to get to the site. It's reasonably challenging because it's a small object in, you know, silty, low visibility water. So I figure, you know, if we can find this, then 
we will have developed some techniques that will probably serve us well in the future. So that's the main reason. The scan I did was quite long, but I'll show you just the section that identified what I think was a promising target. Now, you can see one object that I pass that is a large commercial mooring quite close to the public wharf. And on the scan, you can see that the line coming from it actually extends up off the riverbed. And that's how you know it's the mooring, because it's up into the column, the water column, as the chain and rope goes up to the buoy. But a little bit further along and further to port, there was another mark, and that's not associated with any particular mooring in the area. So I figure it was a pretty likely target to be this anchor. My plan was to simply go to that site, try and drop the anchor pretty much on that waypoint, then I could dive down the anchor and hopefully end up in the right area. All right, just let the anchor sit while we get kitted up. Obviously the very first thing I'll do when I get to the bottom is have a look how the anchor's sitting, if it's bedded in or whether it's just sort of on its side. Of course now I've just seen the forecasts going up to a 20 knot nor'easter, which is pretty much that way. Pretty exposed to nor'easters here. Ah, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, I know. Upgrade since last time. Uh, Paul's regs didn't even have a compass on it, just pressure, no depth or compass. So I got these little Cressy Leonardo dive computers, reasonably cheap and cheerful once again, but now we've got uh, air pressure, compass, and the dive computer on both sets of regs for myself and Paul. So huge thanks to the patrons who help fund these dive computers. Definitely gonna make Paul and I safer when we go diving, particularly at deeper depths. I am gonna rig up a line though, so if we find it, we can clip onto it. All right, let's just run it down the anchor line. Then I'll be able to grab it relatively easily. Once underwater, just headed straight down the anchor line. You can see here the hook line for attaching to the anchor, should I find it. Sort of got snagged on the chain, didn't drop down that far. I might put a larger ring on it for doing this type of uh, deployment again next time, but that's okay. Unfortunately, the bottom here where I was anchored is about as silty as the river gets. It's quite surprising. Some areas with high current flow are actually a sandy bottom, but here, just pretty much pure silt. Had a search line to do a circular search around the anchor, had that shackle on the end or that clip. So I just ran that round the roll bar on the rockner so I could use that as my anchor point to start doing some circular searches. Uh, yes, my torch kept going off. I don't know. At first I thought maybe the battery was dying, being lithium, but uh, maybe it was just me hitting the uh, off button by mistake. Once I had the search line attached, it became pretty obvious there was not much point trying to do a visual search, so I decided to head back up to the boat and grab the Excalibur metal detector. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hood covers your ears, of course. Uh, all right. Misty. Uh, I am very tempted to rig up some type of bracket to put a torch onto the Excalibur, provided I can find a way to do it that doesn't interfere with the electronics in it at all. this point managed to get the lanyard for the torch wrapped around the search line but uh, you know you get that when you're hanging on to so many different lines and clips and bits and pieces. could hear there that once every circle I obviously cross Renko's anchor line so you sort of get that hit which sort of in some ways helps you with your bearings but is also a problem too. Unfortunately I couldn't find any sign of this target I could see on the side scan sonar which I think was due to dropping the anchor in the wrong place but I do have a technique I'm going to try next time to try and solve that problem. so silty there it's pretty much just perpetually zero viz it feels pretty pointless detector works you know it's doing the loop and then every time you do a loop of course you go over your own anchor chain get a great hit uh, I don't know. grappling grappling next Remember to turn this GoPro off for a change. Jeff, who gave me a hand pulling those wires through the other day, just called saying his outboards are uh, not idling, just stops, you know, dies when he throttles back. So he's coming over here now because the tools are on the boat. We'll have a look at that too. Dive flag down, spat us out. Okay. So it just stalls as soon as it. Fixed it. That'll be a hundred bucks, thanks. All right, you'll check. <laughs> well, Jeffo's uh, outboard turned out to be a non-event, so let's just clean the gear. With these Excaliburs, it's actually important to get this sort of uh, coil protector skid plate off because you can 
get a lot of that uh, uh, sort of mineralized sand in here and get false readings. Nick bought one second hand that uh, apparently was giving a lot of false readings. He got it relatively cheap. When it arrived, he saw that this had been cable tied on. So the first thing to do was cut those, take it off, clean it, and it works perfectly. So definitely the most important thing I need to clean. Obviously the rest of it for, you know, the longevity of the unit, but for results, don't skip this. All right, I think that's the mud off the Last thing I'm gonna to do today is just put this uh, T-Rex waterproof tape over the holes in the mast before the rain comes tomorrow. This, for example, is that same tape that's been out here on the deck, I don't know, at least six months, walked on, whatever, you know, peeling in a few places. But pretty impressive for tape outdoors on a deck that wasn't even cleaned before it was stuck down. Pretty amazing stuff. Other thing I'm going to do now is there's software updates for the inverter and the solar charger, I think. So I'm going to run those. Chugging along. Now I'm waiting for Windows to update too. Of course, upgrading to Windows 10 meant that uh, the charts I had with OpenCPN thought it was a new computer and therefore won't work because it's part of the copy protection. I just went ashore to uh, run some garbage over and uh, noticed there was a little water monitor over at the steps. Low tide. Not get too many oysters on my inflatable. Still there, mate. This is why you don't really wear shoes on and on. You spend half your life doing this. Don't know if he's doing the sit really still and no one will see me or whether he's just cold. Now it's downloading the maps again. That's gonna go grappling for this anchor, but uh, give it a training. Watching various things update for hours on end seems like a good alternative. Ah, we've got charts again finally. Yes, it was a bit of a pain. It only happened because we upgraded from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Um, open charts, whatever they're called. Um, detect this as being a new computer, so the copyright software kicks in. Um, you know, anyway, it's working. What I really loved, and if we zoom in, I lost the footage for it. Yes, I did it too long ago, but this is when I was scanning and found that prospective target for the uh, anchor. Because I also mirrored this screen on this little LCD in front of the wheel, it made it really easy to drive these tracks. So the combo actually is really handy, you know. Then I could just have full screen side scan sonar on the Raymarine. Could have done split screen, but obviously, you know, you lose screen real estate when you do that. All right. I am going to see an open CPN. This is obviously track. There we go. I don't want to delete it, but can I hide it? So, yes, has a name now. Properties, show on chart. No. Okay, all right, cool. So now we can start with a bit of a clean slate for our grappling. Ferry's just pulling in. So, sonar's on, that's mirroring. Let's rig up our grapple. Now this, I actually found when I was diving years ago for uh, Dave Howell's lost mooring. And uh, I assume they're used by mooring contractors to grapple for moorings that are lost. You know, the buoy gets cut, the whole thing sinks. You got a fair bit of, uh, you know, hardware on the riverbed that can be found. This grapple looks homemade. So somebody's bound to say, hey, that's mine. I go, well, I found it. I presume they made it strong enough to lift a mooring block. You know, they they weigh about a ton. I think they lose 40% of their weight underwater. So you've only got to get to the surface, then you can rig it. 
Uh, got a release eye here, so if it gets hooked, you can pull a second line and get it out. I'm not so worried about that because I can just go for a dive and get it back, and I don't want lines going everywhere. But what I do have is a couple of bits of chain here. I'm thinking I'm gonna put a bit of chain on the front and a bit of chain on the back to make sure it drags through the mud properly. This particular chain with a hook at each end, I think I used when I was lifting the Detroit. So this can become the trailing edge chain, and then I'll have a leading edge chain here with a shackle onto there. And then, I think it's still at the bow from the dive the other day, I'll grab that other kind of 12 mil rope and we'll use that as our uh, dragging rope for the grapple. That particular rope wouldn't be strong enough to lift like a mooring block or something, but this is snagged anyway. If we snag something, we might be able to lift it. You know, we might hook the chain and be able to lift enough to see what it is. Don't know. If we can't, we'll put a boy on it and we'll come back and dive maybe tomorrow or the day after, which you'll see in a future video. Anyway, we'll give it a go. That way there'll be lots of different things in this video and I'll have no chance of thinking of a title for it. Just have a little bit of chain this end too. No, no mousing, nothing fancy, just get it in the water. Could run maybe the other end of this line as the trip line here to retrieve it, but to be honest with you, if we snag something that securely, I want to go and see what it is. I don't want to get the grapple back. All right, let's go do some more sonar scans around that waypoint. Was waypoint 11, now it's possible anchor or whatever. So I'll actually swap to chart mode first. Uh, and I might actually transfer that waypoint over to OpenCPN so that I can keep an idea of where it is whilst looking at the sonar here. I did my dive during the week. I think I was way too far forward. Anyway, let's mark this, control O. If this is the anchor, we know the chain's stuck in the reef. So I might do a run from the public wharf heading on a northeast. Hopefully that way we've got the highest chance of crossing the chain with the grapple. So now what I'm going to do is head just east of that mark. You can see here, I believe if that's the anchor and the chain's here, we're trying to cross it this way. I'm feeling that just knocked into gear is enough to get that grapple off the ground. We either need more weight, more scope, can't really go much slower. Let's try more scope to start with. It's not particularly muddy, tiny bit, maybe we're at hit first. So I think we definitely need more scope. <sighs> Do I put one of those sash weights on the other end? Very good question. All right, this time I predetermined how much scope I'm gonna have. I've got it all sort of ready so I can just throw it. It's already cleared it off. I'm feeling like a deckhand would be good for this, so I may wait until I can get Pedley or Paul or something. But it's good to experiment. All right. Let's get driving. A bit like fishing, it's nice to actually feel what the line's doing. I can't go any slower. It's a bit hard to tell, the grapple's gonna vibrate traveling through the water for sure. But is that the feeling of it running through mud? Don't know. What I am gonna do, and I'll record this for you guys too, is uh, at the end of this run, just do a sonar scan again, see if we can see any tracks from it. It'll certainly tell us if it is running along the mud. Maybe not deep enough to hook the chain if it's been in the silt for a long period of time which it has six months you know may have gone quite deep we've now done two runs in what i think is a bit of a sweet spot for the chain being there no luck 
So let's pull it in and then do runs with the sonar and see if we can see any evidence of it having dragged the bottom. All right, let's go see what we can see. There was definitely signs of tracks heading from the starboard side of the boat towards the port side and heading up a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't call them hugely distinctive, so I'm thinking the trick is going to be to add some more weight to this grapple. We got to the reef pretty quickly, so I think the track we were running was a good one, so I'm glad that's stored in OpenCPM, because I'll definitely run that exact same track again next time. When I was looking later, I think I may have dropped the anchor a little bit east of that mark where I was sort of trying to look. So that's probably a big part of why we didn't find any evidence of what the sonar was seeing. One technique we used when we dived on the wreck of the swan, which you haven't seen yet, coming soon, uh, was that we actually dropped a weighted buoy that we descended down. But at the bottom of that, we also had a small styrofoam or styrene float. And the reason we did that is that once you've dropped it, you could scan back with the boat again, and that will show up on the sonar as well. And so when you see your target in the water and your styrene float, you'll get a sense of how close you are to your mark when you dropped your buoy. That's not a kind of a double check that I had when I dropped the anchor. There was a fair bit of discussion last week about adding that third roller to the bowsprit to stop the chain hitting or cutting it back. And I think the compelling argument for adding something extra, an extra roller over cutting it is that when you're deploying it, the chain will go slack and it's likely to hit anyway. Not so much pulling it back in, but definitely heading out. So that was a good point. The thing that maybe isn't that obvious on film is how low profile that stainless bowsprit is by the time you get to the aft end of it, which means there's not a lot of room to put a roller really. Obviously it can be bent, welded, whatever, but for now I'm actually just going to put a bit of um, high density polyethylene as a rubbing strip there with a rounded edge on it uh, while I start having a look at what's the lowest profile roller I can find. Here's some leftover chunks of polyethylene from other jobs, so I'll just cut this to width with the saw, drill it, and then we'll curve off one of the edges. All right, I'm thinking we're gonna try and clamp this on. All right, let's just get the distance of the foot of the circular saw. Near enough's good enough. In the absence of a table saw with a guide, I think this is the best I can do. Next up, I'm going to put a curved bit in the router and just put the curve on this leading edge that the chain will be running over. Actually didn't come out that bad in the scheme of things. Certainly better than metal on metal, but gives you an idea. We don't have a lot of height to work with. If we did have a roller, it would be basically a bolt with a sleeve of this sort of stuff machined and drilled or something. Weather's still terrible, so we'll uh, bolt it on another day, but at least it's ready to go. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, not the week I had planned, uh, half due to the weather, half due to things just not going right. But, um, you know, I learned a few things. Definitely, I'm keen anyway to start developing these search techniques. Anyway, I'm going to get on now and I'm going to start fixing the heat exchangers from Pete Halverson. We've got a sunk outboard to look at tomorrow. Went out offshore fishing with Jason and Adrian. 
I've uh, also started video diving the swan and we're going to pull the Detroit back out of the trawler in about a week or so. So plenty more coming up. All right, take care. I'll catch you then. See ya. You're feeding yourself today. your face you've been digging in the dirt too haven't you keep going you've been given access to Vicky's compost pile full of worms full of bugs it's your luckiest day ever You're going to be here for hours, aren't you, digging away? <laughs> Why don't we break this down, Daffy? Daffy, look! Look how many big worms are in there. They're getting away. <laughs> Early bird gets the worm. It's about time you got something first, Daisy. Just to the madam. Although you have got the use of your legs to scratch properly, you've got an advantage. <laughs> All right, I'll leave you two to it. 